Hey, what's going on guys? So today we're going to do another website clone using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And a lot of people seem to enjoy these. We've done a few on the channel and I think anyone can benefit from them, including beginners as well as more seasoned developers that just want to work on their CSS skills. So in this video, we're going to build the SpaceX website and or at least part of it. And I like this project because there's some really cool animations that we're going to get into that aren't too difficult, but they're really useful if you want to use them in future projects. We're also going to get into some JavaScript as well, and I'll give you a demo of everything in a minute. But first, I just want to mention our sponsor Hostinger. And at the end of the project, we're actually going to deploy this website to Hostinger using Git and their HPanel software. So as far as services, there's hosting for just about any type of project. You have your shared hosting for small to medium websites, cloud hosting for larger scale projects, virtual private servers. So if we click on web hosting here and scroll down, you'll see that there's some very, very affordable packages that offer just a ton of stuff, free domain names, free SSL certificates, email accounts, MySQL databases. Uh, if we click on, click on select here, and scroll down you'll have a link in the description of this video along with a coupon code of traversy media which should give you 10% off of your purchase all right so if you want to check them out that's hosting her i'll have a link in the description and again at the end of this we'll be deploying to one of their servers so what i want to do now is just give you a quick demo of the project so this is the final version it's at traversy demo.dev i'm going to leave it there for at least a few weeks And this is the home page and then I have the SpaceX.com website here as well. And there has been some changes. They did update the background image or they actually updated a bunch of these images. But if you want to grab these ones instead, that's absolutely fine. They did move the menu here over to the left. It was on the right before. Um, and there are some differences. This is not pixel perfect. I didn't copy any of their code, so I just built it from scratch. And there's a different font. I couldn't find the exact font. Uh, for free anyway. So we're just, just going to use one that looks similar. And then as far as like the mobile menu here, you click it, comes out, this turns to an X. We're going to do that. Okay, we have some other cool animations like the button here, uh, the underline under the menu items. So we're going to do that as well. Uh, when we reload the page here, you'll see this text kind of fades in and up. We're going to do that as well. And then the rest of the home page is pretty much just sections of background images and text. And again, some of the images are different. If you want to grab those images, you can. And then there's just a very simple footer at the bottom and uh, and everything is responsive. So if we make this smaller, you can see that everything just stacks and the mobile menu. Now the mobile menu has all of the links when it's on the desktop view. When you have these, this has now has less links. Okay, so we're going to set that up using some media queries. Um, what else? The inner pages, we're going to do three of them, which are all going to have a background image that comes in the text, just like you see here. If we click on Falcon 9 and then if we scroll down a little bit, we're going to have the launches, landings and reflights and we have a little animated counter. So basically, instead of just having it count up right when we come to the site, what we're going to do is have it at a certain point when we're scrolling down. You can see they're all zeros right now, but when we hit a certain point, they're going to start to count upwards. And if I go back up, it resets, come back down and it counts upwards again. So that's that's where the majority of our JavaScript will be. All right. And we'll do that for a Falcon Heavy. So same thing as well as Dragon. This one counts up a little higher, so it takes a little longer and you can mess with the, you know, the, the number of seconds you want it to take and so on. All right. So that is pretty much it. There's a lot of images, so I'll have a link to the GitHub repo, which is right here. And uh, and yeah, you can get all the images from this folder right here. Okay, so all the different sections. All right. So that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoy this and let's get started. All right, so we're going to get started on our SpaceX website and I have the final version here just so we can use it kind of as a reference. 
And as far as files and folders, all I've done is created just some empty files I have in my index.html. And in CSS, I have a style.css. And in JS, I have a script.js. If you want to use different file names, of course, that's fine. And then I also have all the images for you know, the different sections, the SpaceX logo, and then some of the inner pages as well. So I'll have a link in the description where you can get all of this. So probably just have a, a GitHub repo. All right, so let's get started. My plan is to do this header part here minus the mobile menu. We'll do that after. But I just want to get these links, the desktop menu, the logo, get this little effect, this underline effect, and then move on to this main section area. Uh, we do have a little bit of animation. There's an arrow here that flashes and bounces. And then also when the page loads, this animates. We have this this as well with the button. So we'll do all that, you know, as it comes. But let's start off with just adding our let's close that up. We'll add our boilerplate here. So just an HTML5 boilerplate in the title. I'm just going to say space X and then let's add our style sheet. So that's going to be CSS slash style CSS. I'm also going to put my script tag up here as well. So that's going to be in JS script JS. And then I'm just going to add defer since we put this at the top. If you want to put it at the bottom, that's fine as well. And then for now, we'll just put in H1, save that. And then I'm using an extension called live server. So I can either right click and say open with live server or just click this go live button. And then that should open our project. Okay, and for now, I'll make this smaller for now, but we're going to want to um, to have the screen bigger so we can see the test, the desktop menu. So as far as um, the HTML for the header or, or nav bar, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to use in an, uh, an, a header tag. And basically, let's say, give this a class. So we'll say class, let's say main dash header. And this is basically going to be a flex box where we have the logo and then we have the desktop menu, which will be the two flex items. So for the logo, let's have a div with the class of logo. And I do want to link around the logo going to the home page. And then let's say image that's going to be IMG slash and then logo PNG. And we'll just say space X for the alt. Okay, so that should show the logo. The text is white, so we can't see that, but you can see this little this thing coming off of it. And it's going to be really big for now. We'll size it uh, in a few minutes. And then we also want the menu, which is going to be the next flex item. So under the logo div, let's do we'll use a nav tag and I'm going to call it desktop dash main dash menu. And then in here we'll have a UL with some list items and the first couple are actually going to go to separate pages. So this one we'll call Falcon 9 HTML, which will just take us to the, the Falcon 9 rocket page, Let's say Falcon 9. All right, we'll just copy this down a few times. And then the second one is going to be Falcon heavy, and that's actually going to go to a page called Falcon dash heavy. Then we have the dragon. So this will be dragon dot HTML and dragon. Okay, and then the rest of these aren't going to go anywhere. So I'll just go ahead and command control D, select all of them and change it to just a, a number sign. And then we'll get rid of these. Okay, and then whoops. And then this this one here is going to go to let me see starship. And then after that, we have what's the next one human space flight. And then we have ride share. And the last one is shop. Which is a little different than the SpaceX website. They have shop with the, the, the mobile menu here, but I don't like that. I just I'll just add it to this menu and have this on its own. Okay, so that should do it for the HTML for the header. Let's take a look. So obviously it's going to look pretty bad, but we're going to go ahead and um, let's grab our style sheet. Okay, and we have some base styles to add as far as the font goes. 
I can't remember the, the exact name of the SpaceX website font. It's like something grotesque, um, which isn't a free font, but I found one that's really similar. So if you just search for grotesque, there's two options here. You might think it's the space one, but it's not. It's the fam family gen grotesque. I think this is more similar to uh, to what the SpaceX website uses is everything's very like smushed together. So we're going to grab that. We want the regular 400. We want the medium 500. Actually, no, we don't want that. We don't need that. We want the semi bold 600 and the bold 700. And then all we have to do, we could add a link tag or what I'm going to do is choose import and we're going to just put this in our CSS file. Okay, and then this font family right here is just going to go in the body. All right, so we'll say body and then we'll paste that in. Okay, so now we should have that font displaying. Now I do want to add a reset, so we're going to add an asterisk, which just will select everything. And then I've also been adding the asterisks and then before and after, which are pseudo elements, because just the star doesn't cover pseudo elements. something that was suggested to me um, actually by a, a, a viewer. So here, let's say we want margin zero and padding zero. So that'll take away all the margin and padding. And then, of course, we want to set our box sizing. I don't know why autocomplete isn't working like it's supposed to. So we'll set this to border box. Okay, and then in the body, Let's do I'm going to add a background of let's make it black by default and then the color will make that white by default. All right, so should look like that. Now just some base styles like the links. I want the links to be white and not have an underline. So let's do that. We'll say text decoration. We want none. And then for the color of the links, we want white. And for any unordered lists, I just want to get rid of the bullet points. So we'll say list style none for that. All right. So now we're ready to work on the header, which has two flex items. We're going to be using Flexbox has the logo, the UL, which we want on this side. So let's do that. I'm just going to add some comments in here. So this is the header slash nav bar and it has a class of main header. Okay, and then I do want it to be fixed. I want it to always be at the top. Like if we come here and we scroll, the menu is going to stay at the top. I mean, if you don't want to do it that way, that's okay. But I'm going to choose to do that with position fixed. As far as the actual position, we'll say top left zero, and then we want it to go all the way across. So 100%. All right, and then. As far as the the positioning, the Z index, we're going to have quite a few things like on top of each other. So if you look at the menu here, if I open up this um, because these both do show at the same time, if you go to the SpaceX website, it's not like this only shows when there's a desktop menu. So I want this menu to go behind this. But also notice when I open the mobile menu, there's an overlay, a dark overlay that we want to make sure is behind these. Um, well, I guess it really I guess it really doesn't matter, but I, I want the overlay to be behind these. All right. So what we'll do is set a Z index here. We'll set a Z index of three for now. Okay. And then I want to display this as a flex box. So now if we come back over here, you can see now they're in a flex row. Um, like I said, I'll take care of the logo uh, size in a minute. But let's say display flex and then the remaining space right here. I want to be in the middle of the two. So we're going to use justify content and set that to space between. So that will push that all the way over. And then as far as vertical, alignment, let's say align items to the center. Okay, and then I also want to text transform because everything's going to be in uppercase. So I don't, like I said, I don't know why my autocomplete isn't working. So text transform 
and let's set the initial height of this header to 100 pixels. And I do want some padding on the sides. So zero, we'll say zero on the top and then 30 on the left and right, just to just so this stuff isn't right up against the edge. All right. Now, as far as the logo goes, let's do that next. So let's say logo. And remember, there's a div with a class of logo and then the image is inside of that. So I'm going to set the div to 210 pixels wide and height auto. Now that's not going to change anything because the image can still break out of that container. So what we need to do is then target the image. So we'll target the image and we'll set that width to 100% of its container. So now it's down to 210. All right, and uh, I'm just also going to display this as block instead of inline and I'll just also add height auto here as well. All right, now for the menu, let's target that now. So this will be the desktop menu which has a class of desktop main menu. Okay, and then I'm going to set uh, I want to push that over a bit. So we'll say margin right 50 pixels. And the reason for that is because I want to have room for this this hamburger menu next to it. Okay, now for the UL, uh, I want to set that to a flex box so that the LIs inside of it are put into a row. So let's say desktop dash main menu and then the UL we're going to display that as a flex box. So now all the list items are in a row. And then for the list items themselves, just grab that and say list items. So for those, let's uh, first of all, I want to position it relative because we're going to have the little uh, border and the, the underline inside that has a little animation or transition. And let's set margin right so that we have some spacing in between these. And then we'll add a little bit of just two pixels pad, uh, two pixels on the bottom. So padding bottom two pixels, because if we look at the final version here, we have this little line animation underneath. So we want a little bit of spacing in between the two. Now to create that line, this isn't like just a, a text decoration underline thing. You can see it's a it's an element with some animation. So we're actually going to use the after pseudo uh, pseudo selector or pseudo element. And I'll just put a comment here just saying this is for the say menu item bottom border. Okay, so we'll take the UL and then LI and then the link and then we're going to use colon colon after. So we're creating a pseudo element here to style. Now when you use before or after you do have to add the content property and I could even put content in here. Like if I save that, you'll see now it says hello right here. Uh, so it's basically creating like a ghost element, but I don't want any content there. I just want to use this for styling. So I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, or just set that to an empty string and then let's position this absolute. Okay, so it's getting positioned absolute within the list item, which is position relative. Then I'm going to set the position to, let's say zero from the bottom and let's say zero from the left and then we want it to go all the way across. So width is going to be 100%. The height is going to be one pixel because it's just like an underline and then the color background color, let's say white. And then right now it's just going to it's going to be on all of them. Um, ultimately, we only want it on the hover. So it's going to the way that we get this animation is with the transform property and using scale X. So we're going to scale it up when we hover over it. That means that to to start off with. We're going to set the scale. So let's say transform um, scale X and we're going to set it to zero by default, which is going to make them all go away. Now on hover, let's grab this here. And we just want to say a colon hover and then after 
that's when we want to scale it back up. So let's say transform and we'll do scale X and we want to scale X to one. It's full size. So now if I come over here and I hover, you'll see now it gets added, but it's just like a simple underline right now. So what we want to do is have a transition. So instead of going from just off to on, there's a little bit of a transition over a certain amount of time. So we can do that by adding transition. Uh, and the property we want to add the transition on is transform. We'll say 0.6 seconds. And then as far as the effect, we'll use cubic Bezier. Uh, and then or you could just do like ease in out or whatever, but we're going to use this. And then for the values, we'll do 0.19. one let's do 0.22 and one so now if i come over here and i hover now we get that cool little effect now you can see it kind of starts in the middle here in the center and then opens if you want that effect that's fine but this one is a little bit different you can see how it kind of starts on the left or whatever um, now to do that we're just going to add a transform origin property on both the Uh, you know, the unhovered state and then the hover state. So let's come down here and let's say transform dash origin. And we'll set this to start off with at right center. And then I'll copy that will come down here. And when we hover, let's make it left. Left center. And then I'm also just going to change the duration down here. So we'll say uh, transition. dash duration let's do 0.4 seconds all right so now if i come over here now we get that same kind of effect that we have here but again it's completely up to you if you want to customize any of this anything that i do in this project um, you of course can change in fact i'd recommend experimenting and trying different things all right so that takes care of just the desktop version of the menu And the, the logo, obviously, right now it's not responsive. That doesn't look very good. Um, but before we move on to that stuff, I just want to do this um, like this first section here with the background image formatting this this intersection or inner area, this button hover and all that. So let's go back to our HTML. And the, the HTML for this is going to be pretty simple because all the sections are, are pretty much the same. We have a big image with the text over here with the button. So you can see it. They're all pretty much the same all the way down to the footer. Um, so the HTML is going to be simple. But let's jump over here and let's see. We have our header, which ends here. So I'm going to just call this section A. And I know that section A is kind of vague, but the SpaceX and, and I mean, any website, it updates often, right? So the SpaceX website is, is different now. I, I created this. I finished this two days ago and it's already different. Like it already has a different image and different text. So I don't want to call like the classes. I don't want to call this like CRS 25 for my class. because this could change tomorrow, right? So that's why I'm using something like section A, because no matter what the text is, no matter what the image or the link is, it's always, uh, it's always going to be section A, right? So let's see, we'll go ahead and create, I'm going to use an HTML5 section tag and give it a class of section A, right? And then inside that, So basically, that's that's where we'll put the background image. But then the text inside, let's call that we'll give that a class of section inner. Okay, and we'll have an H4 here, let's say upcoming launch for the H4. And then we'll have an H2 because it's going to be bigger text. We'll say CRS dash 25 mission. And then we have that button underneath, which is going to have that cool animate effect. So we're actually going to give this a class of BTN for the basic styling and then a class of animate as well. Okay. 
Now I'm going to add another div in here for the hover effect. So let's say dot hover and then under that div, not within it, but under it, we'll have a span with, let's say, rewatch. Okay, so if I save that, it's going to be way up here. It doesn't look very good, um, but we'll fix that in a second. Now we do have this the scroll arrow here that's going to be on all of these. You can see that it flashes and it bounces just to show you that, you know, you can scroll down. But I think we'll do that after, you know, after we get the image showed and we have um, our text where we want it to be. So let's just go with that for now. And then let's jump into our style sheet. And then we want to start on. Let's see, let's add. Let's put a place for our background images. All right, so for background images, we have our section A. Let's say background dash image, and we're going to set that to a URL. And that's going to be up one level because we're in the CSS folder and we want to go into images and we want section dash A and these are going to be Web P images. So I'm going to do Web P. All right. Now, if I save that, it's only going to show a small portion of it because this section, it, it only contains like like the height is only as tall as the content is at the moment. So we're going to have to. Um, fix that. So let's go. I'm actually going to put. Hmm. Yeah, let's let's do section. So what, what we're doing here is just targeting all the section tags because they're all going to have the same basic styling. So we'll say sections. And I want to change the height instead of being just the height of the content. I wanted to take up the entire viewport. So height is going to be 100 viewport heights. Okay. now the image we can't see because we do have to add some some uh, background properties here. So let's add a background. Oops. Let's add background dash position and we're going to set that to center center. So the X and Y axis, we're going to set that to center. We should also put in our background repeat. because we don't want that to repeat. So let's say no dash repeat. And then as far as background size, we'll set that to cover. All right. So now the image looks how I want it to. It's it covers, it's centered. Um, and then the only other thing that all the sections are going to have in common is they're going to be position relative. because the tech, the section inner is going to be absolute. So we want this to be relative. And then I also want to add uh, text transform because everything is going to be uppercase. All right. Now for the inner, which is, you know, around this part right here, we want to position that and stuff. So let's go. say section dash inner. All right. Now for that, we want to position that absolute. And let's say from the bottom 200 pixels and from the left, we're going to go 150 pixels. Okay, so that should position it down here, which is what we want. Okay, and then let's see, in addition to that, I'm just going to set a max width. because on the SpaceX website like this here I don't we don't want it to go all the way over and it doesn't on the actual site so we we do want to set a max width for the, for these so let's say max width and we'll do 560 pixels all right now for the separate items here like the H4 the H2 Let's do that. So we'll say section dash oops, section inner. Let's do the H4. That's what's on top. So I'm going to do font size 22 pixels. And then let's say margin bottom just to give some space. We'll do five pixels. Uh, what else we want the the font weight. 
we're going to make it a little lighter. So we'll use 300. Let's take a look. Yeah, so that looks good. Now the H2 is going to be much bigger. So let's say section dash inner and we want to target the H2 now. And for that font size, we're going to do 50 pixels. And this is desktop first that we're doing. So none of this is going to look good on small screens right now. So that and then let's bold it. So we're going to do font weight 700. Okay, and then um, we'll set a margin bottom of 20 pixels. So now we want to do the button and the button has some some cool effect where the background like comes up from the bottom. So nice little transition. And I actually had to peek at the SpaceX CSS to see how they did that because I've, I've just never done an, uh, anything like that, a hover effect like that. So let's add, uh, let's see, where should we put the button? Because the, the BTN class is like a utility class. It doesn't have to be in a section, but I guess we'll put it here. We'll, we'll go under the background images and let's say BTN. Okay, and then we'll do position relative uh, because we will We're going to have the hover state be or the hover. I should say the hover element, because remember, we have this div, the class of hover that's going to be positioned absolute within the BTN, which is position relative. So position relative, let's also display as an inline dash block because we want the next thing to go on a separate line. But we also don't want this to go to have a width of, you know, 100 and then cursor. We want that to be a pointer um, text align. Text align will do center. Okay, and then oops, center. And then let's do a min width. Min width is going to be 130 pixels. We're going to have some padding. So padding will do 15. on the top and bottom and 50 on the left and right margin top. So we just want to push it down a little bit. That'll be 10 pixels and then a border of two pixels and we'll do solid white. Okay, so if we take a look at it, so it's going to look like so far and the text, we want that to be uppercase. Pretty much everything on here is uppercase. And that's another thing that I want to mention is even if you plan on everything being uppercase, you don't want to do that in your HTML because you never know when you might want to change that. And if you do imagine having to go through and change all of this from uppercase to lowercase. So you want to start off just, you know, just regular case and then add that in your CSS if you do want it uppercase. So let's also do font weight. We'll do bold and then the overflow is going to be hidden because the hover element inside, we don't want that to, to come out of its container. All right. And then the Z index, we're going to do two on that because the hover element inside, we want that to um, we want it to come up, but we don't want the text to be blocked. Okay. Uh, we also want the text to be dark on hover as well. So what we'll do is take that BTN and on the hover state, um, we want the span. So remember the text is in a span. We want the color of that to be black. Okay. So if I hover over this now, now it's black. So now we want to take care of the, the white part. Okay. Which is going to be that hover element. So let's say BTN and then don't do don't do colon hover because we're targeting a, a div inside called hover. We could probably use a pseudo element for this, but whatever, this is fine. So I'm going to position this to be absolute. And then we want this to cover the whole thing. So top zero, what the hell? Top zero and then left. What is going on? Left zero. Um, 
And then of course we want it to take up the entire thing. So we're going to do with 100% and height also 100%. And then the background color is going to be white. We'll do color dark. I don't think I don't think we need that, but we'll add it anyway. And then the Z index for this is going to be lower. So let's do negative one because again, we want the text to make sure the text is on top of that. All right. So if we take a look at it now, it's just always white. And that's because of this hover element. So what we want to do is that hover element. We want that to start down here. Okay, out of view, you know, that's why we added the overflow hidden so that anything inside it's going to just it's going to be hidden. It's going to go out of the, the square here. And then when we hover over, we want to move it up and we can do that with translate Y because we want to translate the position on the Y axis. And that's that's for in the trans with the transform property. So what we'll do is in the initial button, let's say transform and then translate on the Y axis, which is up and down. We want to set that to 100%. What that's going to do, if we look over here. Uh, wait a minute. Transform, translate Y 100%. Um, oh, I'm a dummy. I put this on the button. This should be on the hover element. So down here, we want to add that. here. Okay. So now we can't see the hover element, which is that white box because it's pushed down 100%. In fact, if I if I make it let's say 70%, now you can still see it because 100% would be, you know, pushing it all the way out, but now it's only pushed down 100%. All right. And if I wanted it to go up like push it up here, I would put that as a negative value. So now you can see that it's pushed up 70%. So we want to start with that 100%, so it's out of view. And then what we'll do is add on the hover, let's say down here we're going to do a class of BTN on hover, so colon hover and then style the hover element. And then we just want to add transform translate on the y axis and we just want to bring it back to its normal position which of course is zero. So now let's come over here and then it's moved up, but there's no transition so it's just on or off. You know, we want to have a smooth transition. So let's take um I'll just grab the right here, this same transition we added with the cubic bezier and it's on the transform property for 0.6 seconds. So we can just add that same thing right here. Okay, so now I'll come over and now you can see that it nicely, you know, transitions up and the text changes from white to black as well. And I just realized that we don't actually need that animate class. If you wanted to, you could add that to your CSS and then you know, only have that happen if you put the animate class, but we're just going to leave it as the default for any button, any BTN. All right. Now, I think we could do the 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 animation of the entire thing. So this right here where it fades up and then we could also do the scroll arrow as well. Um, but let's take care of this. So the way we can add that is by creating a keyframe for an animation. So let's come down here and let's say animations and the way we create a keyframe is with at keyframe uh, or keyframes. Sorry. So keyframes and then we can name it, name our animation. I'm going to call it fade in up because that's what it's doing. It's it's not only going from invisible to visible, you know, changing the opacity, but it's also coming up, right? If we look at it, it fades in, but it's also coming up from the bottom. So that that's going to be a translate Y value. So what we'll do is say on zero. So zero percent. 
we're going to want some styles and then on a hundred percent we're going to want some styles. so it's basically start and end so i want to start with opacity zero which is invisible and end with opacity one which is fully visible okay and we could even just do that for now and the way that we implement this is by going to wherever we want to put this now it doesn't all come up at once right if we look at it it's not like this block comes up at once they all come up separately so we're going to put this animation on the individual elements as opposed to just the entire um, the entire section inner so keep that in mind so let's go to let's see up here we have section inner then we have the h4 so on h4 we're going to add animation and the animation we want to use is going to be fade in up the time to that it'll take because we can specify that is going to be a half a second and we'll just use ease in out okay so if i save that and then we come over to our project and i reload you can see that it fades in all right and then let's also add this to the h2 okay we want to add it there now i do want to have a little delay otherwise even if we put the animation on all three separate elements it's going to be at the same time so after ease in out i can actually add a delay so we'll say we want a 0.2 second delay so now if i come back over here and reload you can see that first comes the h4 then comes the h2 because it's a 0.2 second delay now i want to do the same thing on the the um the link here so let's see we have our button i don't want to put it on the button though so what i'll do is add here section dash inner a and then we're going to have the animation right now i want that to be last so i'm going to change the delay to 0.4 so double this delay save that let's come back over reload and let's see why isn't that working oh i used a div that should be, <laughs> i used a div for that um yeah let's change that okay so we want to make that an a tag now we get that that effect um but right now it's just fading we want it to fade in and up so what we can do is instead of just having you know just having the opacity we're also going to add to this a transform and we want to translate so yeah translate y and for 0% we want it to start down below or, or you know underneath where it currently is so let's say 140 we'll do 140 pixels that's where it'll start and then where it will end let's say transform translate y it'll end in its current position which is zero so now let's save that and now we get that fade in up effect but there's still something that's not quite right and that is this we can see this these headings before they come up right if we go to this one they just they fade in and up you can't see them initially so to fix that we just simply want to add uh, a new property let's see and it doesn't have to go on the first one it just needs to go on the second two which is the h2 and the link so we're just going to add right here animation dash fill dash mode and we're going to set that to both okay you can set it to forwards backwards we're going to set it to both and that's going to stop let's put a comment here we'll say stop from showing at the start of the animation and then I'll grab that and also put it on the link okay so now let's come back over to our project and reload and now it's not there at the beginning of the animation it just comes in fades in and up all right cool so the next thing 
will work. And by the way, this will happen for all of them. You know, like if I come down here and reload, same thing. But uh, what we'll work on now is the scroll arrow. Okay, so it's going to be just a little arrow here that comes in, does a little bounce effect, just very, very subtle, just to let you know to scroll down. Uh, and if you don't want it there, that's fine. But I figured I wanted it to be as close to the SpaceX website as I could, or at least the home page. Um, and it just shows you how to do stuff like this. So we do have to add a little bit of HTML within our section. Um, that's actually an SVG. So let's go. We have section inner, but we want to go under that. Make sure you're not in section inner. We want to go under that, create a class. Let's call it scroll dash arrow. And then I'm just going to paste in the SVG. It's not much. You can just copy it. So with 30 pixels, height 20 pixels, and then we have our path. All right. So if I save that right now, it's just going to be the arrow, the SVG up here in the corner. So let's position that. We're going to come back in here and we'll go down here under the button. And let's say scroll dash arrow. And I'm going to position this absolute within the section. And then let's put it for a position. We'll say bottom 50 pixels and let's say left. I want it to be in the middle. So I'm going to say from the left 50%. However, that's not going to be directly in the middle. You can see it's pushed over to the right too much. And that's because we're saying um, we want this, the beginning of it to be 50%. So right now the beginning of the arrow is right in the middle. So to fix that, we, we can just do transform and then set, uh, we'll say translate on the X axis. And we just want to say negative 50%. If we do that, then the, the actual arrow is going to be right smack dab in the middle. Okay, now let's see, let's add, we're going to want to have a, an animation where it fades fades in and out and it also like does a little bounce and that's going to be infinite. It's not just going to do it once. So let's add another animation. So we'll come down here and let's see, we'll go. We'll go right down here and let's say keyframes. And then we'll call this bounce or we should say, let's say. We'll say fade bounce. I like to be as descriptive as possible. So here we're going to select different percentages. It's not just going to be zero. Whoops. It's not just going to be zero and a uh, hundred. So let's say at zero percent at. 20 percent, 50 percent. 80 and 100. This is where we want the opacity to be zero and then transform. We'll say translate on the Y axis. Let's do negative 20 because I want it to go up. So if you want it to go down, it would be 20. But if you want it up, it would be negative. Just like if you do on the X axis, if you want it to go right, you do positive. If you want it to go left, you do negative. Okay, then at 40%, so we'll come down here and we'll say at 40%, that's where I want to, um, let's grab that. That's where I want to set this translate Y to zero. And then I also want the opacity to be one. All right, so now we just want to apply this fade bounce to the, uh, to the scroll arrow. So we'll go right here and we'll say the animation that we want to use is going to be fade bounce. We'll do five seconds. So five seconds iterations and we want it to be infinite. Okay, because we want it to just keep keep going through that animation. So now let's save. This comes up. The arrow fades in, does a little bounce. Fades out and basically it just does that every five seconds. So now what we're going to do is grab 
all the section A here, because they're basically all the same, just different images and text. So I'm going to grab that whole section, paste that in here, and that's going to be section B. So we want to change the class name to section B. And then as far as the text, if we go here, let's see. So it's going to be recent launch for the H4 and then Starlink mission. So we'll change that to recent launch. Do I have GitHub Copilot enabled? Let me just disable that. All right, so, and this was what, uh, Starlink. So Starlink mission. And I'm going to have the scroll arrow on all of these except for the very, the last one. So next, we'll paste that in. This is going to be section C. So we'll change this. And let's see, this is going to be recent mission. And it's the S, SES 22 mission. All this stuff will stay the same. Then we'll do section D. Okay, so section D is going to be recent launch. Let's make sure we change this stuff here. Section D. So recent launch and it's going to be the global star. Let's say global star um, FM 15 mission. And then let's go under here. So let's see what was that D. So this one's going to be E section E. And this is a. Uh, Actually, this one doesn't have, let's see, Starship update. This one doesn't have an H4, so we can get rid of that. And we're going to change that to Starship update. Okay, and then underneath that, we're going to have F. And that one. So Starship to land at NASA astronauts on the moon. So that doesn't have an H4 either. So Starship to add NASA astronauts on the moon. So the last one, I'm going to actually get rid of the this div with the scroll arrow because there's nothing else to scroll to. So if we go ahead and save that, we take a look. All the text should be in place and, and all the spacing. We just don't have the images. So in our style sheet where we have that background image right here, all we have to do is grab that, copy that down. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F. And then we just want to change the name of the classes here. So that'll be F. And then I name the images the same thing. So I'm sorry, this will be B, not F. Let's do B. C and we have D E and F. All right, so let's take a look. There we go. And then the last one shouldn't have that the, the arrow. So let's see, I guess I guess we'll do the footer next, which is going to be pretty simple. So if we look at the footer here, we just have SpaceX copyright and then we have some links. So in our index HTML, let's go under the last section and let's say footer. We're going to have a UL. And we'll have a list item with space X and we'll do copy, let's say 2022. And then the rest of these are going to have a link, which aren't going to really go anywhere. So this one is what Twitter. Actually, let me just copy this down. We have three, four, five, six, seven, I believe. So Twitter. YouTube, uh, Instagram, 
Flickr. Who uses Flickr still? Uh, LinkedIn. Privacy. And suppliers. Okay. So if we save that, that shit's going to look like crap. So now we're going to jump over to our style sheet and let's style the footer. So I'll go right above animations. Let's say this is the footer. And uh, I guess, yeah, we'll just we'll just grab the footer tag. Yeah, let's do that. So footer. And we're going to position this to be relative. Why does Copilot keeps turning back on? Or is that tab nine? What? Wait a minute. I'm not sure why tab nine is enabled. It's a great tool, but uh, I don't want to use it right now. Okay, so position relative, and then let's do padding, 55 pixels, zero. And then we want for the UL, let's say footer UL. And we're going to display that as a flex box, so that'll make all the, the list items, well, it should make them in a row. What did I do here? Footer UL. Oh, you know what? That stopped my server when I reloaded. Okay, so now we have these going in a, a horizontal row. So let's uh, let's add some justify content, and we want to center and also align items. Set that to center as well, and then I'm also going to add flex wrap and set that to wrap. Okay, now we want to do the list items. So footer UL LI. And let's do margin right 30 pixels. So the color for the list item, this isn't going to be the link color, but just the, the ones that are not links, which is just this first copyright. So I'm going to make that a little darker. We'll do triple A. So that's only going to affect that one. All right. And then we'll do, let's say, text transform because we want to make these uppercase. And let's do font size. We're going to make it smaller, 13 pixels. And then I'm also going to do a line height for when it wraps. So we'll do 2.5. And then um, for the links themselves, let's say footer UL LIA. And for the links, we want those to be white, which they are by default. But and we'll add a transition so that when we hover over it, it has a, a little effect. So let's transition the color. We'll do 0.6 seconds. And then we just want to add a hover effect. So we'll say footer UL LI a hover. And we'll do color make it a little darker. So AAA. All right. So now if we hover over it, transitions to gray. So pretty simple. Now, before we get to the, the mobile menu, I want to just. Um, I want to make this somewhat responsive. So what we'll do is use the dev tools here and I'm going to click on this this uh, device toolbar. If I click that then we can see the mobile view and I have the iPhone 12 selected. So now let's create some media queries um, to handle this. So let's see. And I just want to change like obviously we don't want this menu to show here. I also want to change the positioning of this. Um, so yeah. And I'm going to put this below the animations. So I guess we'll just say media queries. And we're going to have a few. We're going to do one for 600. So let's say media. And we'll do a max width of 600 pixels. Actually, let me just check as if I see if that's what I wanted. 
Yeah, we'll do one for 600, and then I'm also going to do one for 960 because that's where I don't want the, the desktop to show is anything under 960. So let's also do media max width and 960 pixels. Okay, so this is where I want to hide the desktop menu. So I'll say hide desktop menu. So desktop, what was it? Main menu. And we'll say display none. Okay, so now that goes away. And then in the 600 is where I want to change like the, the positioning of this here. So let's go into this media query and then we have our section dash inner and let's put it to bottom. We'll say 75. I think it's 150 by default and then left. Let's do 20 pixels. OK, so. Yeah, that looks better. Now, the, this font size, I also want to change that up a little bit. So let's say section uh, section inner and let's do the H2. Those are H2s, right? Yeah. So the H2, let's let's do a font size. I think we did like 50 by default. Let's do 40. OK, and then. I think that's good for now. And then we just want to do the for the footer. Which I can't even see here. Just because of how this is. There we go. So the footer we will just make that. Hmm, what should we do with that? What did I do with that? OK, so we're actually going to have the SpaceX copyright above these. So let's go into our 600 media query and what we'll do is say footer UL LI. We want the first child, which is the copyright. And then I'm going to position that to be absolute within the footer, which should be position relative. Let me just check that. Yeah, but footer is is position relative. So we'll position that absolute. That'll take it out of the, the regular flow. And then we'll set it to, let's say, top 30 pixels. And then from the left, we want it to be in the middle. So we'll do 50 percent. But again, that's not directly in the middle. So we need to add transform and then translate. Um, sorry, translate. Actually, we'll do X and Y. So just translate and then negative 50 percent, negative 50 percent. So let's see what that looks like. All right, cool. So that doesn't look bad. Um, I'm just going to set the list items. So footer UL LI margin right, which by default is 20. We're going to lessen that to 10 pixels. Hmm. Let's see 100. So I mean, I guess that's all right because it does wrap. Or maybe we should keep it at like 15. So we have a yeah, I think that looks good. OK, cool. Um, actually, the logo. On the actual SpaceX website, it's in the middle and it's smaller. And I did do that here. Let me just show you on this one. See how it's in the middle here. And the logo is smaller. We're going to do that as well. I mean, you don't have to. You could keep it like this if you want, but I tried to stick with the you know the the actual website and how they did things so let's um let's say logo and i'm going to set the width to 150 instead of whatever it was 280 and height actually we don't need to do that but let's do margin auto okay so now it puts that in the middle makes it smaller OK, so I think that looks good. Let's go ahead and get out of mobile view. And now we're going to work on 
get this out of here too. So now we're going to work on this um, this hamburger menu. So basically, we want to create the actual menu with these lines. We're also going to add an effect where it turns into an X when it's open. And then we want to add uh, basically a dark overlay over the entire site. We want to disable scrolling and then we want to have this menu pop out from the side. So let's start off with the hamburger menu itself. So the three lines with the, you know, with the animation. So we're going to go up to the top here and I'm going to put the hamburger menu right after the header. I don't want it to be within the header. And the reason for that is because when we open it we want the header is going to be behind this menu but we want the the hamburger menu to be on top of it because it's going to change to an x so that we can close it so we want to put this outside of the header right so put a comment here so say hamburger menu and then let's make this i'm going to make it a button given an id for the javascript so we'll call it menu dash btn whoops that should be a number sign so menu dash button and then I'm also going to give it a class of hamburger and then I'm also going to give it a type of button all right and then inside here we want to basically have three spans let's say hamburger dash top copy that down and then we're going to have middle and bottom okay if I save that and we look at ours we're not going to see anything just yet because these are just empty spans what we want to do is turn these spans into into lines basically so let's go to our css and let's go down let's see i'm going to go above the media queries and above the animations so right here and let's say hamburger menu and we'll start with the class of hamburger As far as positioning, I'm going to have it fixed and let's do from the top. We'll do 40 pixels and then from the right, we'll do 20 pixels. Now the Z index, I want this to be really high, so I'm going to use 10 because I always want it on top of everything the, the the menu, the overlay, everything. So we'll set that to 10 and let's also do a cursor, set that to pointer. And let's do uh, as far as width goes. Let's do 20 pixels. I tried to make it look as much like the SpaceX one as possible. And then let's say background. Since it's a button, we need to set that to none. Same thing with border. Set that to none. Okay, and it's still not going to show anything yet. So for the for the lines. Let's say hamburger dash top. So this is going to be those spans that we have. So we have top, we have middle and we have bottom. So these are going to all have some common properties because they're all going to be those lines. So we do want to position these absolute. Right. And then we want to set the width to 20 pixels, which is the width of the menu. or not the menu but the icon and then the height for each one will be two pixels so there'll be two pixel lines um, for the positioning let's do top zero so top zero left zero and we're going to make them white so we'll set the background to background to color we'll set the background to uh, white and then yeah let's just save that Hmm. We should be seeing. Wait, what happened to my color? There we go. All right. So now it looks like one line, but it's actually these three spans. So there's actually three lines. They're just all positioned in the same exact spot, which is zero, zero. So now what we want to do is move the middle one to the middle and the bottom to the bottom. So let's take the. hamburger dash middle span and we'll use transform we want to translate on the y axis which is up and down and then we let's say five pixels so we're going to move that basically move that down five pixels 
All right, now we have two lines. And then I'm going to take the bottom and that needs to be twice the amount of this. Okay, so if you use like 7 here, then you're going to want to use 14 here. We used 5, so we're going to want this to be 10. Okay, so that they're evenly spaced. Now, we have our three lines, but we're going to want to make it so that when we click on this, what ha- what will happen is a cl- in our JavaScript, we'll make it so that um this hamburger button will have a class of open as well. So what I'm going to do right now is just manually put a class of open on here. And then we're going to go back into our style sheet and basically create that x if there is a class of open. Okay, so we'll say transition hamburger hamburger to x when open. So let's take that open class and we're going to transform and we're going to use rotate which does just that. It'll rotate it a certain number of degrees. We're going to do 90 degrees. Okay, and now if you look at our lines, now they're rotated. Okay, next thing we want to do is the hamburger top line. So, and remember this is only if it's open, so we want to prefix it with the open class and then hamburger dash top and then let's say transform and then we want to do a couple transforms here first we're going to rotate it 45 degrees from where it is and then we want to translate on the y axis 6 pixels and then translate on the x axis 6 pixels okay so if i save that you'll see now that hamburger top is is the uh that side of the x i guess okay now there's three lines here and an x only has two lines so what we'll do is the middle one we'll just make it go away so let's say hamburger dash middle and we're going to display that to none there we go now we just need to take the bottom one and make it go the other way for the x So hamburger dash bottom and let's just copy this and we'll paste that in and what we want to do is have that at a negative 45 degree angle and then for the translate x we want that to be negative 6 pixels. Save that and now we have an x. Okay? Now to be able to have the functionality where we click on it to turn it into an x, we have to add some javascript to to dynamically add this open class. So what I'll do is get rid of this right now and it's going to go back to three lines. So let's open up our javascript and we'll put this on the end. So here we're going to bring in let's say const button and say document. There we go again with the GitHub Copilot, I guess for every file. So let's say document dot get element by ID, and the ID is menu dash btn. So that's our hamburger menu button. And then uh, let's see, we won't do anything else yet. I won't do the overlay, but then let's take that button. And let's add an event listener onto it. So we want to listen for a click. And when that happens, we're going to have a function fire off called nav toggle. All right, so let's come down here and let's say function nav toggle. And then we're going to take that button and we want to take the classless property here and then there's a toggle method that we can use to toggle a specific class and what we want to toggle is the open class. So let's save that and come over here and if I click it, now it turns into an x. But notice how it's just right away. I don't want that. I want to have a, a transition. So what we'll do is go into our style CSS and let's go to where we have the the top, middle, bottom and let's say transition. We'll just transition all and do a half a second. Okay, so now when I click it, you can see that it transitions into that x instead of just, you know, immediately turning it into an x. 
So now that we have that set, now we need to have a couple other things happen when we click this. We want the overlay, okay? Because as you can see, if I come over here and I click, we get this dark overlay or, that goes over everything except the header. And then we also, of course, want our menu. So let's let's do the overlay first. So I'm going to let's see. Um, yeah, so the way this is going to work is that div that has the class of overlay. Oh, we didn't add that yet. So under the body, you're going to have a div with the class of overlay. And then what's going to happen is dynamically when I click this, I want a class of overlay show or whatever, whatever you name class name you want to use. But I'm going to use overlay show. And when that happens, I want to have a, an absolute positioned uh, element that covers everything and has a dark background. All right. So let's go ahead and save that. And we want to bring this this overlay. Well, actually, we'll add the style. No, we'll add this to JavaScript. So this overlay class, we can bring it in. Actually, let's make that an ID, not a class, because we're not styling this overlay. We're styling overlay show when it's added. But let's bring it into our JavaScript. So we'll say const overlay equals document dot get element by ID. Grab it by its ID of overlay. Oops. So overlay. And then what all we want to do is when we toggle the nav, we want to take that overlay and we want to toggle a class again, just like we did with the button. So let's say toggle and the class I'm going to toggle is going to be called overlay dash show. All right. So if I were to open up my dev tools right now and if we look at this div right here of overlay, if I click this, you can see it adds a class of overlay show. So that's what we want to now style. So let's go into our style CSS and we're going to put this right below the hamburger stuff. So let's say overlay dash show. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. I try to find the easiest way I can I can possibly find when I do videos like this, just so it's not that difficult. So we're going to give this a position of fixed and top zero, let's say top zero, left zero. We want it to cover everything. So width is going to be 100 percent and height is also 100 percent. And then the way we're going to add the dark background is by setting a background color of RGBA. So red, green, blue, alpha. I want it to be black. So zero, zero, zero for red, green, blue. And then the alpha, which is the transparency, will do 0.5. Okay. And then I want to add a Z index of three. So let's just save that. And then. Um, yeah, so we'll save that. And then if I click the menu button here, the hamburger menu, you can see now we get that dark overlay and it toggles it because of this right here. OK, so hopefully for those of you that that have never done anything like this, you know, this kind of dynamic um, functionality, hopefully this gives you an idea of how this happens. We basically just just dynamically add and remove classes in JavaScript and then we style those classes. So now for the actual menu, OK, because we want this menu to, to pop out, we have to add that to our HTML. So let's do that. So let's see. Uh, actually, one more thing I want to do. When we do click this, I don't want to be able to scroll. See how we can scroll. So what we'll do is remove scrolling from. Um, from the body. So in the nav toggle, let's say document dot body that selects the body tag and then let's do a class list dot toggle toggle and then I'll have a class called stop dash scrolling okay and then we'll go back into our style sheet and let's say stop dash scrolling and we're just going to set overflow 
to hidden. And now if I come over and I click that, now there's no scroll bar and I can't scroll. Okay. So now for the menu, let's go to let's see, we're going to put this right under the the overlay and we're going to put it above the header. And then this is going to have an ID, so let's say mobile-menu because we do need to grab it from the JavaScript and you can use classes. You can use query selector if you want to do that, but I I I like to use IDs for JavaScript and classes for styling if I can. And then for the styling, we'll add a class of mobile- dash, we'll call it mobile main menu. And then we'll have a UL and it's going to be different depending on the page size. Wait, what did I do different here? Starlink shop. Oh, I forgot the Starlink link. That's all right. We'll just add that. Let's let's do it now. So, I forgot to add Starlink after um ride share. Not a big deal. We'll just There we go. All right. I was wondering why it was different a different size. All right, but anyways, this menu on on large screens on desktops, you can see that the links here are completely different from the desktop links, but on small screens, since that desktop menu isn't there, they get added to this mobile menu. So keep that in mind. Um but yeah, let's go back over here and so we have our mobile menu, our UL and we're going to add some list items here. This is going to be mission. So mission, then we have launches. Then we have what careers. Updates shop. Okay. Um Actually, we don't need shop because that's on the other men. Well, no, we'll keep it there. All right. Now, we also want these. So I'm going to grab all these list items here and put them right in here. However, we only want these to show on mobile. So what I'll do is just add a class here of mobile-only. Okay? And then we're going to copy that and I'm going to just place a cursor in the rest of these list items here and we'll just paste that in. So now all of these have the mobile only class. We'll get rid of shop cuz that's already in there. Okay? And if I save that, we should just see this all this mess at the top here. So obviously we want to, you know, style this so that it looks like this. Okay. um but that mobile only all we have to do is outside of the um let's just put a comment here say stop body scroll okay and then let's say hide mobile main menu items i guess so we'll say mobile dash only and we want to display none. Okay, so if I save that, you can see on the on the sub menu here, or the mobile menu, those links disappeared. But if we're, let's see, in our 960 here, we want to show we want to show those. So we'll say mobile dash only and then we want to set display to block. All right, so now if I make this smaller, you can see that those links then get added. Why is Falcon Heavy still there though? Did I not add that? Oh, I forgot to add it here. So Falcon Heavy, let's say class mobile only. All right, cool. So now what we'll do is start to style it to to be able to pop out on the side here and I'm just going to leave it open for now so we can style it and then we'll add the functionality to be able to, you know, open and close it. So let's go back to our style sheet and we're going to go let's see above the animation. So we'll go right here and let's say this is going to be our mobile menu. 
So we have the class of mobile menu. What is it? Mobile main menu. And let's see, how do we want to style this? Um, we want to position it, of course, to fixed. And then we want it to be top zero. And then it's going to be on the right. So we'll set right to zero. And let's give it a width of 350 pixels. And we want it to height. We want the whole height of the browser. So 100% height. Now, I think if I save this, we can't see it. And that's because we need to set a higher Z index. So let's say Z dash index and I'm going to set it to four. Okay, so now we can see it. I do want to add a background color. Let's say background, we'll set that to black. Okay, and you can see it spans 100% for the height. Now to get the all this stuff in the middle, what we'll do is display as a flex box and then we're going to set a line dash items to the center. We also want to justify dash content to the center. All right. Cool. So as far as um, you know, this styling this stuff, that's going to be the UL and the LIs. So let's say mobile dash main menu. We want to take the unordered list and I'm also going to display that as flex. Um, we're going to set it to a column though, because if I do that, you'll see it'll put it into a row. So I want to set the flex direction to a column. All right, and then I'm going to align Let's say align dash items to the end. Okay, because uh, we want, you know, we want it to be aligned so that the end is all lined up. That's how it is on the SpaceX site. And then I'll just set justify content to center. And then let's do padding 50 pixels and then the width. I'm going to pay, make the width 100% because we're going to have um, let me show you we're going to have these these borders here and we want those to span the entire thing. Not the entire thing, but the entire thing with 50 pixels of padding. This space you see right here is this padding. You just can't see it yet because we haven't styled the list items. So now let's do the uh, list items. So mobile main menu and we want ULLI so we'll set margin bottom separate these out a little bit let's do 20 pixels on that and uh, and since it's on a smaller screen than 960 we're seeing all the links but if I make this bigger we don't see all of them so let's uh, let's change the font size to 18 pixels and what else are we going to do here let's make them uppercase so we'll say text dash transform we're going to set that to uppercase and then let's do that border uh, border bottom so for that we're going to do one pixel white and we're going to make it dotted Okay. Now we want that to, you know, go all the way, so we're going to set that width of the LI also to 100%. Okay. Now I want the um I want the menu items, the words to be on the right, so let's say text align to the right. And then I just want to add some spacing underneath, the, let's say padding or padding bottom. Eight pixels. All right, cool. Actually, the the border I actually don't want that to be white. I want it to be gray. So let's do triple five. There we go. So that looks pretty good. And then let's see. We'll have a hover so that they're gray when we hover over them. So I'll just grab this. Let's say 
our links. Um, I'm going to just make it color white by default and then let's add a little transition for the color. Color we'll do 0.6 seconds. Okay, and then on hover, let's say a hover, we're going to change the color to let's do triple A. All right, cool. So now we have the styling done for this. Now we don't want to show this menu to begin with, right? We only want to show it when we click this and it opens. So let's see. So and we want it to come open this way. So what we'll do is by default, we'll translate it so that it's off the screen to the right 100%. So we can do that by going to our menu class here and let's add a transform. So transform what am I doing? Transform and then translate on the X access. So by default, it's going to be 100%, which is going to knock it off the screen. And of course, we want to add a transition because we don't want it to just like pop in. We want it to slowly pop in or come in. So let's do transition on the transform property for 0.6 seconds. And we're going to use cubic cubic dash Bezier Bezier, however you say this. And let's do 0.191, one, 0.221. OK, now we want it to pop open when we click this. So what I'm going to do is add a class. I'm going to go right here and let's say bring menu from right. So what we'll do is we'll have a class of show menu. And we'll just set the transform and then translate X where it's at 100% by default. We then want to bring it to zero if this class is added. So now in our JavaScript, let's just go. Let's bring in the menu. So we'll say const menu and document dot get element by D. We want our mobile menu. Okay, and then let's go right here and we'll say for menu we want to then add a class list or we want to add a toggle a class sorry so we want to do toggle and the class we want to toggle is show menu the one we just added to the CSS so now if I click this now it comes in because that class of show menu gets added and again if if those desktop links aren't here they're going to be added here All right, good. So let's see the next thing. We're pretty much. Yeah, I think we're pretty much done with the home page. Yeah, so now we'll go ahead and do the inner pages. So these three Falcon 9 Falcon Heavy and Dragon, if I click on it, you'll see that it takes me to this page where if I reload that the image fades in the main image and then the text comes up. Now it does the same behavior as with our home page here where these comes up so we can actually utilize that same fade fade in what I call it fade in up that keyframe we can use that here as well. But then we also want it so when I scroll down these uh, these stats here launches landings and reflights those are going to um, those are going to count upwards. Okay, and it's not going to start just when the page loads. It's at a certain scroll. If I slowly scroll down, you'll see that they're actually all set to zero until I hit a certain point, that point right there. Okay, so we uh, we definitely need to add some JavaScript to be able to do that. Okay, so let's start off with um, just creating the inner pages and in the HTML, which isn't going to be very difficult. So in the root here, let's create Falcon 9.html. And once we do one, it's going to be simple to add the other two pages. So I'll I'll just go ahead and copy our index HTML, everything in it. And then 
in this Falcon 9. We'll paste that in. Let's start at the top here for the title. We'll go ahead and just add in Falcon 9. All the all the menu stuff, all the header stuff, that's all going to stay the same. Right. So if we come down here, the hamburger menu, that's going to stay the same. What I'm going to do, though, is um, uh, what I'm going to do is just get rid of all the sections. Okay, we want to keep the footer, but just get rid of all the sections. And then here we're going to add a section. And I'm going to add a class of section dash animate because that's where we want to add the the animation for the image to fade in. And each one is going to have a different image. So we do need a class for the specific image. This one I'm going to call BG dash Falcon dash nine. OK, now for the text, if I just go here and I show you, you might think that this text is going to go inside the section. However, if I do that and then I try to make, animate the background image to, to come in like it does, the text is going to come in at the same time because it will be inside the section. You know what I mean? Where in, instead I want them to be separate where the background image comes in and then the text can just come up. It's not attached to that the same div or the same section or I should say just same element as the background image. So instead of putting it in there, we're going to go underneath and I'm going to call this section dash inner dash center. OK, so we're going to add that and then that will have an H3. We'll say Falcon nine and then paragraph. We just grab that. OK. And then, yeah, I think we'll just we'll do that for now and then we'll add the stats after. So let's save that and let's go over here and click on Falcon 9 and we're just going to see this. So it is um, it is a section. So we do have like the height. That's why this we have that height to it. Um, and that's coming from. This right here, because it is a section. But what we need to do now is just add some new stuff to it. I'm trying to think of where we should where we should put this. Um, so you could put it up here with like your other section stuff, but I think what I'm going to do is just put it at the bottom above the animations. Yeah, so right here under like the mobile menu and I'll just say inner pages. All right, so for the background image, remember I have a class of BG dash Falcon dash nine and I'm going to set a background image URL and we're going to go up one level into image and then we have Falcon what is it Falcon dash nine and then Web P. And there we go. So now we have the background image now for the animate. Remember, it also has a class of section animate. So I'm going to put that. Let's say section dash animate. OK, and what we'll do is create just a fade in animation right now. We have fade in up, so I'm going to copy that paste that in and just call it fade in because this is what we want for the um, for the image and all we're going to do is the opacity so we can get rid of the transform here. OK, and then on the section animate, we'll say animate or animation. And we want the fade in. And then what do we want for parameters here? Let's do two seconds and we'll do ease ease in out. All right. So now you'll see when we come to the page that just fades in. Now for the text, first of all, before we animate the text to come up, we need to style it, right? We don't want it looking like that. So let's go right here and let's say 
section dash inner dash center. And we're going to position that to be absolute. We want it in the middle, so we're going to do top 50%. And then let's do from the left 50%. But then we also want to add our transform. Translate negative 50%. Negative 50%, just so it's directly in the middle. All right, and then, okay, so now it's in the middle. Let's do a text dash transform. We'll set that to uppercase. And then let's do uh, text align center. All right, so I think that's all we need for the, the actual section in our center. Now let's do the H3. So we have an H3 and a paragraph. So let's say section dash inner H3. And the font size is going to be really big on this one. Let's do 100 pixels. Let's do a margin bottom of 15 pixels. And then I'm going to have the animation. of fade in up. Okay, so we'll say fade in up. Let's do 0.5 seconds and then ease in out. Oh, I'm sorry. This should be section inner center. And there we go. Now we want the paragraph to come in right after it, right? So we want to have a little delay. Um, So I'm just going to copy this and then change this H3 to a paragraph. And then what we want to do is set the font size to 20. And we don't need a margin bottom. We want to use fade in up, but we want to add a delay. So let's do 0.2 seconds. Okay, so now it does it does do the uh, the you know the up motion, but It's there to begin with, which we don't want. Remember, we had this problem on the home page and we fixed it by using animation fill mode. Uh, fill dash mode and set that to both. So now it doesn't do that. Just like this comes in and this comes in right after. All right. So now we have that done. So now we just want this. Um, these stats here. Okay, we don't just want to display them. We want to have this functionality where we hit a certain point and then they count upwards. So this will be like the most JavaScript that we write. So let's go back to Falcon Falcon 9 HTML and I'm going to go directly under. Let's see this div of section in our center right above the footer and let's create a class of stats. And then we'll have a div around each one. So let's say div. Then I'm going to have a span with the class of counter. And in that is going to be just a zero to begin with. Now, the actual number, like, for instance, this is going to be total launches, which is three. So we're going to add a custom data attribute here of data target. Okay, and then that's where we put the number we want it to count up to. And then for the label, we'll just use an H4 and we'll say total launches. Okay, and then we want to do that for the other two as well. So I'm going to just copy this div down. And the second one is going to be total landings and that's seven. So we'll change the data target to seven. This one is going to be total reflights. And that's going to be what for. Okay, so if I save it, it's going to look pretty bad to begin with. So before we do any JavaScript for the numbers, let's style it. So we're going to jump back into our style sheet and let's do. We'll say stats. So stats. Uh, we'll do a max width here. Of 960 pixels. And I want to move it to the middle, so we'll do margin zero auto. Um, 
yeah, so that gets pushed to the middle. But we want these to be side by side. So let's let's display flex. So if I do that, then they should be side by side. Let's say a line items to the center and we want justify content to be the space between. So basically the remaining space should be between those three divs. So space dash between. There we go. And then also text align. We want that to be center. And let's text transform like everything else is going to be uppercase. Oops. There we go. All right. And then for the span, remember the span is the actual number. So that's going to be the biggest font. So let's say stats div span. And the font size for that is going to be 160 pixels. Okay. And then for the H4 underneath, let's say stats div H4, let's say font size is going to be 24 pixels and font dash weight is going to be lighter, 300. And there we go. So now we have the styling. So now we just need to add the JavaScript. Okay, so Let's see. I got to think of how I want to do this. If we should do just the count first. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Before we do like the scroll effect so that when we hit a certain point, let's just have it count up. So what we'll do is create a function called count up. And then just for now, we'll just call it, right? So count up like that. And what we'll do is We need since we're doing this on three elements. I mean, it would be a little easier if we just had one. Since we have three, we need to grab them all. And remember, each one has a class of counter, right? So when we bring them in, we need to use query selector all because we're grabbing multiple elements. So up at the top here, let's say const counters and let's set that to document dot query selector all and we want to select all the elements that have the class of counter so that's going to give us an array or something like an array it's a node list but we can actually loop through it with for each so what we'll do in our function here is say counters dot for each and um, this for each takes in a function i'm just going to use an arrow function and let's say for each counter and then what I'll do here is just for now a console log counter and it should show us all that the three elements in the console. So if I go to console, there we go. We can see our three elements. Now the inner text they're already set to zero, but we want to set it from here to zero as well. So we'll say counter dot inner text and I could set it to anything. If I set it to hello and I save, then they're all say hello. but we want to set it to zero. Okay, and then what we'll do here is have a fu uh, another function in here. I'll use an arrow function. We're going to call it update counter and set that to a function. And then we want to get basically we want to get this number by in the data target. Okay, so we can do that. with the get attribute uh, method. So let's say const and we'll call this target and let's say equals counter dot get attribute. And we want to get the attribute of data dash target. All right. And then that this will give us a string. I want to convert it to a number. We could do that with parse int or or the number we could wrap it in like number like that or we can just put a plus sign that will turn it to a number as well. So now let's console log here target and see what we get. Uh, wait a minute. Const oh we didn't call update counter. So still within the for each we're going to go down here 
and let's call update counter. Okay, so now we see three, seven, four. Those are the attributes, right? We were able to grab them and output them. Now we want to then get the the current counter value. So let's get rid of this. We sh I should put some comments here. So this will hmm, say get count target, and then we want to get the current counter value. So we'll do that with const we'll set the C variable to a number of counter dot and then inner text. Okay, now we want to create an increment because it needs to count up. So let's say const oops, what am I doing? Create create an increment, let's say const increment and the way I'm going to do this is just take the target okay so whatever three seven and four and then let's divide that by a hundred so now we just want to check to see if the counter is less than the target if it is then we want to increment right they start at zero and then we're going to check to see uh, if that zero is greater than the target which of course it isn't then we want to uh, call update counter again. So let me put a comment here. We'll say if if counter is less than the target, then we want to add the increment. So let's put an if statement here. And what we want to check is if C is less than the target. Okay. And if it is, then Let's round up and set the counter value. So we'll say counter dot inner text. We're going to set that. Um, basically, we want to take this, the, whatever the C value is and add the increment, but we do want to round it up. So I'll set this to uh, a template string. Let's use back ticks here. And then in here we can use math dot uh, math dot seal to round up and then in here we want to take that C whatever that is and add the increment. All right. So right now it just basically runs once, right? So we want this to keep running. So what I'm going to do is use set timeout. Okay, so we'll say set timeout and then we want to call update counter again. So we're basically calling this recursively and we'll do it every 75 milliseconds. So if I save that now, you'll see it'll run until this is not true anymore, right? Because it's, it's checking the target, which are these uh, these data targets. So for instance, this last one, if I set that to 100 and I reload, it's going to keep on going up until it hits 100. See, so now we can use this in, in on all of our pages and it doesn't matter what, whatever the target is. We just simply to put it in there. All right. Now we do want to have an else here. So right here, I'll say if else so if if c if the current count is greater than the target then we'll just simply say counter dot inner text equals whatever the target is all right so that's how we can do the uh, the the counter however what's going to happen is when we come to the page it uh, it starts so if i come down we don't even get to see the animation you can only see it if like I reload and then scroll down really fast, right? So I want the functionality where it doesn't start until we get to a certain point. So to do that, we're going to create one more event listener. So on the document, I'm going to add an event listener and we want to listen for a scroll. Okay. And then when we scroll, we're going to call a function called scroll page. And then I'm going to put that 
right here. Let's say function scroll page. Okay, now we can get the 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 y value of the scroll. Let's do a console log. Actually, let's create a variable. We'll say const scroll pos. So scroll position equals and then on the window object we have a scroll y value. So let's console log that. So scroll pos. All right, and if I open up my console here and I start to scroll, you can see that position. All right? If I go all the way back up, it goes to 0. So now that we have access to that, what we'll do is check So let's say if the scroll position is greater than 100, okay? Cuz I want it to start once we get like um so right to 100 would be right here. Okay, if you want to make it more or less you can, but this would be 100. That's what I want the animation to start when that starts coming into view. So if that's greater than 100, then we're going to call count up right and i'm going to get rid of the call the the uh, in invocation of count up down here so if position equals that then count up and then what I, what i want to do and you don't have to do this but i want to have it reset if we go back up so let's create a function called reset and we're just going to simply take the counters and loop through so counters for each and let's say for each counter uh actually I don't even need curly braces here we're going to set counter inner html set that to 0 so we're just resetting it to 0 when we call this function so now let's come back up here and let's say else I'll we'll say else if and I'm going to say else if the scroll position so if the scroll position is less than 100 then we want to reset. All right, now we're going to have an issue here. So let me just show you this. So I'm going to reload the page, I'm going to scroll down. Now it does it, but whenever i scroll you'll see that it just starts over okay so in order to stop this we need to have some kind of flag all right so to to let it know that we've already scrolled otherwise it's just going to constantly do that so what i'll do is up here at the top we'll create a flag actually we're going to use let because we're going to change uh, reassign it so let's say scroll started set that to false by default and then down here um what we'll do is set after it counts up we're going to then set scroll started we're going to set it to true and then in our if statement we want to check to see if it's not run yet so and not scroll started and we also want to put that here as well like that and then come back over here come down once it scrolls it's done but if i go back up it will reset or it should no it's not let's see oh i'm sorry this should be scroll started there we go so now if i come down wait Okay, so there it goes. If I come back up, it resets, come back down. Well, it's not going to do it again because ah, here we go. We need to set it back to false. Scroll started equals false. All right. Sorry, I don't have this right in front of me. So now if I come back, if I come down, come back up, it resets, back down, counts up, resets. Awesome. Okay, so I know that was quite a bit. 
we have quite a bit of JavaScript here if you have no experience with working with the DOM and, you know, events and stuff. But um, yeah, so now if you ever want to use that kind of functionality on your own project, you can. So before we move on to do the other two pages, because we're also going to do Falcon Heavy page and Dragon, I want to make this page responsive. So if we open up the device uh, device page here, you'll see that this text is really large. We should shrink that up and we should probably stack the stats as well, put them on top of each other. So let's go down to let's go in our style sheet. We can close up the JavaScript file. And uh, let's see, we're going to go down to our media queries. So for the if the page is 960 or less, let's go ahead and say we want the section. Uh, we'll do section dash inner dash center and let's take the H3 and we'll change the font size from I think it's like 160 we'll change it to 75 pixels okay now I think that's still a little too big for really small screens so what we'll do is take that and then in the 600 media query let's change it to let's say 50 all right so I'm happy with the font size however I don't want the nine on a separate line here like this should be wider so what we'll do is set let's take on small screens we'll take the center itself or section in our center and let's set the width I don't want to do a hundred percent because I don't want let's see what that looks like actually yeah see that's too now these the paragraph is too close to the edges so what we'll do is 80 Yep, so I think that's good. Now for um, for the stats, let's go ahead and say on 600 or less. So in here, we're going to stack those stat divs. So this ends here. Let's go right under it. Let's say stats. And let's see. So right now they're what displayed as a flex box. So I'll keep it as a flex box. I'm just going to change the direction. So flex direction from from row, which is the default to column, which will stack them on top of each other. And then we should probably add just well, I mean, that's okay, but I'm just going to add a little bit of margin bottom to to these as well. So for the divs, let's say stats div and let's say margin bottom. 20 pixels just to add a little bit more space. So yeah, I think we're good. Let's go back to the desktop version and then we just want to create a page like this for Falcon Heavy as well as Dragon. So let's create a new HTML page. We'll call this falcon-heavy.html and then um, we might as well create the other one as well. We'll create dragon. HTML. Okay, so then we can close that up and I'm just going to copy everything from Falcon 9. I'm going to grab that and go to Falcon Heavy and paste that in. Let's change the title here to Falcon Heavy. And then all we really need to change is um let's see. Yeah, we want to change this right here because this is what controls the background image. So we'll change that to BG Falcon Heavy. We want to keep the section animate. That's what fades the image in. And then for the text here, we'll change this to Falcon Heavy. And then let's get rid of this. And we'll say the world's most powerful rocket. All right. And then here. We need to change just the data target. So actually, no, it's the same. It's three, seven, four, just like um, Falcon 9. So that should do it. Let's save. And I think this link should already work. And the image didn't show up because we didn't add that yet. So let's jump back into our CSS and we should have this. So right here, I'm just going to grab that. 
paste that in twice. Let's change this one to heavy. The image name is also Falcon Heavy. And then let's change this one to BG Dragon because we're going to need that in a second. And Dragon. All right, save that. All right, cool. Actually, I don't want this this width right here. Let's see what I did here. Yeah, this one spreads all the way across. So where I had that width 80% for the the uh, where, where do we do this right here? So section inner center, let's take it out of the media query and we'll just add it up here. Let's see inner center. Yeah, so we can just um, we'll just set a width of 80% on that. That way the text stretches out. And I'm not really happy with the the um, contrast that they use here like this is barely readable. So that I mean, that would be something to think about. Maybe we could add an overlay to this, but I just tried to mimic what the, the actual website has. Um, so so, uh, you know, Gary Simon, don't don't yell at me for this. It's not my fault. It's blame SpaceX for the contrast. All right. So the next thing we want to do is the dragon HTML. So I'm going to just copy Falcon 9 again. Oops. What did I just do? Let's grab that and paste that in. Let's change the title. Dragon. And let's see, we're just going to change this here. So instead of Falcon 9, it's going to be BG Dragon. That will give us the image. Then we'll change the text here to Dragon. And then let's see, what do we have for what do we have for the text? Sending humans and cargo into space. Sending uh, humans and cargo into space. All right. Now this one has a lot more uh, total launches. It's going to be 34. And then we have uh, this is actually not going to be total landings. It's going to be visits, visits to the ISS and that's going to be 31. Remember, you want to change the data target. Leave the, this is zero. You don't even you don't even need the zero in there because we added it through JavaScript. But uh, this one here is going to be reflow missions. OK, and then the number for that is going to be 13. So let's save that and let's click on Dragon. And if we come down here, you'll see it counts up much higher. Now, if you want to change the speed, that's simple. You can just go into the JavaScript and where we have our where is it our set timeout where it calls update counter. If you want to lower that to, let's say, 25, if I save now, it counts up faster. But I would keep it a little slower just because the other ones Falcon, they don't count as high. I think that's a good amount, but of course you can change it around if you want. All right, so I think we're all set as far as building, as far as we're going to build in this website if you want. And I actually would encourage you to add some more content, add some of these other pages. But what I want to do now is show you how we can do an easy deployment to Hostinger. All right, guys, so we're going to deploy this website to Hostinger and Hostinger is sponsoring this video and they're a company that I've worked with for quite a while now, a couple years, and um, their service is great, their support is great, and they offer all types of hosting. I'm using a premium shared hosting account and the domain that I'm going to be using is traversydemo.dev, which if I go to right now, you can see is just, uh, it's just this landing page, there's nothing there, so we want to... Uh, push our website to this domain to this hosting account and there's a there's multiple ways to do that I'm going to use Git. I think that's the quickest and easiest way to do this so if I click on manage for my shared hosting it takes me to my H panel which is hosting or custom uh, uh, management tool for my server and basically from here I could do all types of things I could create email accounts there's even like MySQL databases I could create so if go down here um, 
but what I want to do is go to Git, okay, because we want to basically um, just create a Git repository, and you can use different services like Bitbucket, I believe, and, and GitLab, but we're going to use GitHub. We do have to add this SSH key to our GitHub in order to be able to do this, so what I'm going to do is copy this key, and then let's go to GitHub, and let me just sign in here real quick. I need to just verify the two-factor authentication. All right, let's see. So we got six, six nine eight, seven two five. All right. So now what we want to do is create a new repository. So we're going to click new repository, and I'm going to call this space SpaceX dash website, and I'll have this this repo in the the link in the description. And I'm going to make it private for now, and then just create the repository. Okay, so now what we want to do is push our files to this, um, you know, to GitHub. So let's grab this right here, this Git remote, and then I'm going to come over to my files, my v VS Code, and open up the integrated terminal. If you want to use the regular terminal or Windows command prompt, that's fine as well. But let's go ahead and initialize a Git repository. So we'll say Git init. All right. Then we want to do a Git add. I'm going to add everything to the local repository, and then we want to commit that. So Git commit dash m, and we'll just say initial commit. Okay, so now what we want to do is add the remote repository. So I'm going to paste in what I just copied from GitHub. All right, and then if we look down here, yeah, we'll just go ahead and create our main branch, and then we want to push to the remote repository with this command here. Okay, and then if we come back over here and I reload the page, we should see our files. All right, now since we have this. On GitHub, we can come back over here, and we do have to add the SSH. So let's copy that again, and I'm going to come over to let's see, we want to go to settings, and then we want to go to SSH and G GPG keys, and say new SSH key. I'm going to call this Hostinger, and we're going to paste that right in there. Add the key. Okay, so now we just want to come down here and let's see. The repository is going to be the. I'm going to use this format because it is private. So if we come back over to that repository, let's say your repositories, SpaceX website, and let's go to um, right here and let's copy this. Since it since it's private, I'm going to click on this SSH, copy that. And then we're going to paste that in there. Uh, branch is going to be main directory. It's the home directory, so we just want to leave that empty. And let's click create. Okay, so it says Git report, Git repository stored successfully. So now down here, you can see we have a button that says deploy. So we're going to click that and say yes. And we don't have any output. We can just close that, and it should. Yep, there we go. Traversydemo.dev, and our website is now deployed. So it's that easy. And if we check it, you know, so one of these inner pages, not none of these, but the Falcon 9. Yeah, everything works as expected. All right, so pretty cool. Uh, and if you want to set up auto deployment, you can as well, so that when you push to GitHub, it automatically gets deployed. So check out Hostinger. I have a promo link in the description, and that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.